Hi everyone, this is Genevieve Flynn of Genevieve Flynn Studio and I am a member of Midwest Metalsmiths and I want to let you know right off at the front here, we did my studio tour about a week ago and we forgot to video the first part of my studio tour. So we're doing that now and um, that's basically all I needed to tell you on that. So I work out of my home in Kansas City, Missouri, and I am on the workshop committee with the Guild or the Metalsmith Society. And we were talking about ways to get our members involved because of the COVID pandemic. We wanted to be able to bring our community back together. And so one of the ways we talked about was doing a virtual studio tour with each of our members that wanted to participate. And I volunteered to be the first one and see how this this went and it it went really well you'll see on the second part of this um, that we had a lot of fun talking about things and and all of that so I'm basically just going to have my camera person who is my daughter Marissa uh, follow me through the studio I'm gonna take you through right now we're in the new portion of our house which is about 30 years old but I have a house that's about 120 years old and I'm going to take you back into the old part of the house where I started my studio 1982 I think and um, I started out with a 10 by 10 space and gradually overtook the basement so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this new part we're going to walk into the old part of the studio I'll just show you the things that I have um, how I've implemented this space and then we'll come back in here and talk about this space and a, a few pieces. So follow me. So we're coming into the old part of the house. This was actually the garage. So that whole section there was not there. And so I've utilized this space as much as I can with I have a kiln for doing my um, glass process, the pot de verre process, my glass um, powders and fritz, my wax and plaster molds and some equipment. I've got um, a manual hydraulic press here and I've been utilizing it for, for several things. I'm trying to develop a, a small product line that I can sell less expensively. Um, and so working on that, I've got, sorry, a rolling mill over here, which is a really nice rolling mill. And, um, you know, you're looking at an old basement and we just use it as, as I can. I've tried to use all the space as much as my husband will let me use. So, so we're gonna go over into the old section. Oh, I don't have my ear pods in, sorry guys. Okay, so we're stepped into the old section of the house and this is actually, there, there was a 10 by 10 space right here and I had my polishing and uh, soldering was here, my bench was here and steaming and ultrasonic was over here. And one day there was a wall here and it used to be my um, coal bin for the house. So the coal came directly in from the outdoors. And I asked my husband if we could, if I could utilize that. So. I took that space and then I took a little bit more space and things got moved around. I left home about 2004 and moved my studio completely out of the house. So all of my equipment went downtown Kansas City to the Crossroads Arts section. And I had a retail storefront there, plus was able to teach, start teaching classes there. But came back home, I took half of what I had because I had the new space. So I've got my polishing unit over here. I have a small kiln that I use for um, uh, some PMC stuff that I used to do enameling and things like that. Um, over here on the desktop is just, I implement the space as I can. Um, and then my brother, brother, where did that come from? My husband does <laughs> woodworking. And um, so he has a space over here. And then my steamer and my ultrasonic are over on this side. So it gives me a, a, a place to uh, access water. And so now we'll go back into the newer portion and let you see the whole thing. Okay. 
So you've got a good shot of the studio here of walking into it. It's a small space. It's only about 380 square feet that I have. Um, I try to utilize my space of, as creatively as possible. So on the outside here, I have some hammers, raising hammers. And then as you come into the studio, on the wall directly opposite, I have more hammers and my little wall of, of insects that I adore insects. If you don't know me or my work, um, you will see a lot of insects and flora and fauna in it. Um, to On the other side, there's a small wall of a library and, and reference books that I use quite uh, frequently. I've got a nice exhaust system for my soldering bench and I use an oxyacetylene torch sometimes but mostly acetylene. As we come down this way, on, I've got a bench shear to shear my material. I've got storage for my sheet and wire and I use argentium on this side and sterling silver on this side. I've got some patterns laid out into envelopes so I can readily access them. Um, and then just storage. Some pieces of my old work are on the wall. Um, Identity was at Craft Alliance Center a couple of years ago and I had a couple of teapots in there. I have a couple of pieces on the wall that were some of my older pieces. Um, back in 1986 to 90 maybe and the top piece is a poppy blossom mirror that actually Paula Abdul now owns and then I use this little wall of inspiration over here I like there are, are postcards and and cards that I've picked up and just plant matter animal matter you'll find a little bit of everything on this wall it's just stuff I pick up and I really enjoy and I want to look at all the time. Um, I have a couple of kitties that are resident kitties and the little beds that have the pretty purple fabric are theirs. And let's see, let's come around here and so the thing I recently have worked on, I just got done actually today is this Luna moth brooch. And this is actually going to Jeannie Pratt in California, who weaves metal. She was here a couple of years ago uh, teaching a class on weaving metal. It's 18 gauge argentium, saw pierced, a little bit of chasing and repose. So that'll be going off in the mail soon. This is where I work all the time. And um, you, I get to look out the windows here and if you can see out there, it's kind of a mess right now, but there's a pond on the other side of the flowers that are right in front of me. And I really enjoy seeing the birds and the animals, especially through the winter, um, coming and bathing and um, just hanging out with me. So let's see. All right, so let's look at a couple of things. I put some things out to show you what kind of work I do, just in case you don't, you don't know my work at all. So I work mainly in, in silver. I've, I do some work in sterling and I do most of my work in argentium now. Um, argentium silver is a highly tarnish resistant material. It's a little different to work in, so there's a learning curve with it, but it, it's, it's really great. Um, so what I've got, I've got a couple of chased and reposed vessels. I've got here, I'll just talk about that one since you're zooming in. This one is called Tarot Leaves and Dragonfly Vessel. And there are the tarot leaves, the dragonfly. The base, the branch on the base was cold forged. The, um, there's repose and chasing done on the vase itself. There are sections of the vase that are cut out here. Let's turn it, there we go. Um, and then the wings of the dragonfly were saw pierced and attached with two gold rivets. There's a blown glass insert that can come out or it can be left in there. So it's actually um, a bud vase can be used. 
I've got two little containers here that I've been working on and finished up that this one, they're little art pieces in their own for the fact that I have a dragonfly ring that detaches from the container and it will slide back under the lotus blossom. And when you're not wearing it, there you go. And then this little container has a pendant that when the pendant's not being worn can be hung on the, the lid. And that's just a little acorn with a cold forged branch and a, I believe it's a garnet set in the, up above the acorn itself. And then I've got some beetle, of course, insects, longhorn beetle earrings. They're all out, this is fine silver, argentium silver wires, and an argentium silver back. They're very lightweight, um, chased in reposé on a French wire. I have a baby spoon in argentium. It's been saw pierced and formed and chased, or yeah, chased. And I have a pendant that is tarot leaves and dragonflies. Can you notice a theme here? Um, there's dragonfly with bimetal and then some 18 karat yellow gold down here at the, the little tip and some argentium silver for the uh, the pendant part on a, ch a gold chain. And then last but not least, I've got the last vessel that I have worked on, which I worked on for about three years off and on. It's argentium silver and it's chased and reposé. And I actually, on the glass base here, I sculpted the wax and I had Marnock Glass here in Kansas City cast it for me and gave me my base. And then I asked him to actually blow the glass insert, which comes out. And um, he's done a really nice job for me because he actually did the insert on the dragon uh, fly and tarot leaves vessel there as well. So, <clears throat> um, I think maybe we've covered everything. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, but I want to encourage you all to um, watch every month because our plan is to have a new member, not a new member, a member do a studio tour every month. It'll be the same time 5 30 to 6 30 and I believe the same I don't know this is a Wednesday night I think it is and so it'll be that first Wednesday I think of August maybe it's August 5th I don't quite recall but I'm sure you get an email about it but thanks so much for joining us we really had a good time doing this and I look forward to seeing everybody else's work thank you maybe we can start the question and answer here yeah she's she's got it going now oh yay yeah, and I'm sorry. And if you want, I mean, we'll. No, we'll your fault. I didn't think of it either. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it's our first time. All right. So, has anybody got some questions for me? No questions, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I should. I should. I should think of a question, but well, I've you been should, there. Linda. <laughs> I've been there, so. <laughs> Well, you have, but well, Genevieve. maybe, yes, who is this? This is Nancy Pearson. Yes, what, Nancy. You said you switched from sterling silver to argentium. I'm not really familiar with argentium. What was okay. it that made you make the switch? I took a workshop with Rhonda Coriel uh, 17 years ago, and I was impressed with it then, and basically I was doing mostly jewelry at that time, and um, the advantages, Nancy, are, there are several. Number one, it doesn't tarnish like sterling silver does. I actually did a, a test run, not intentionally, but it, I had a piece setting out in my studio for at least close to a year. And I realized that it was Argentium and um, it, it just really didn't have any tarnish on it. And it was sitting in the studio where I do my you know, soldering and everything. And so it should have, should have tarnished, but it did not. Secondly, um, 
if you heat it correctly and it's easy to overheat it, mm -hmm. it um, does not bring up the fire scale like sterling silver would. However, if you heat it incorrectly or too hot, you do get fire scales. So it's, it's a learning curve on it. And sometimes I love it and sometimes I hate it. Uh, there are things that I, I, I've started doing like my bracelets and the tops of my, my small insect pieces in fine silver because number one, fine silver just moves so easily. Mm -hmm. And because it's not um, being worn in a way that it's gonna get beat up real fast, um, I back it with Argentium and it's, it's very durable. It work hardens, <clears throat> excuse me, it work hardens and um, it's all good. But on the vessels, I always do them in Argentium because I'm still practicing on um, doing like these larger vessels and doing the seam and fusing the seam. That's really scary to me at the moment because like I said, I use a, on this, if you can focus in Marissa, on this bird vessel, it was, it was solid silver when I made it. So I made a conical shape and soldered the seam. And then once all my repose was done, then I came back and cut out these pieces. And some of the areas that you see where the cutouts are in the bird and down around in here, um, that was cut out when, when the pitch was inside the silver uh, cone. And then I take the pitch out and then I cut out the rest of the vessel. So um, it, the, the Argentium is just really, it's a great material. If, what I tell people, Nancy, is if they're a beginner, I give them the option to start in Sterling or in Argentium and explain the differences. If they don't want to do Argentium, that's fine. But I always tell them, if you think you want to work in Argentium, start in Argentium because it's so much easier because silver works differently than Argentium does. Yes, yes. what's next? Uh, how did you get started? How did, how did I get started in metal smithing? Well, here's, it's a cute little story. I just came out of high school. My parents had divorced. I lived in Dodge City, Kansas at the time I went to high school there. And mom moved back to Kansas City because this is where family is. And I was searching for friends because I had lost contact with my friends in high school. They had gone off to college. I opted not to go to college. So I was, um, I took a community course <coughs> at UMKC and it was a one-time course, which most of them are like $7 for the one night. And the guy that taught it encouraged me to continue taking classes. Now I think he had a little twofold reason there. Um, we ended up dating and also, <laughs> <laughs> also I continued the silversmithing. So I dated him for about a year. I moved away for about a year. We kept in contact. I came back. I was enrolled to go to school at UMKC. My interest had always been archeology span and this guy said, hey, you know, I think there's a school here you might enjoy or even be worth looking into. And it was a trade school, which is no longer around. It's still in Quincy, Illinois, um, but it was the Kansas City School of Watchmaking. And they taught how to repair watches and clocks, but they also taught um, jewelry design, hand engraving, uh, repair, stone setting, casting. So I went through all of the jewelry courses and some drawing. Um, and so I just, I didn't want to do the watchmaking at all. So from there, I got a job in a jewelry store, and that was back in 1975. And I have not been a bench jeweler for quite a few years, probably for maybe 20. My career spans about 45 years, so I'd say about 20 years. So that's, that's my story. Uh, Genevieve, your new uh, work in glass is that yes. to is that to replace having the glass pieces made? You know, or that's a good question, Catherine. Initially, I, I wanted to, um, I didn't pull out one of my small vessels, but um, Monarch Glass has been doing these inserts for me because I wanted my pieces to be functional and decorative. And so actually last September, a friend of mine 
who had done glass bead making, um, we were talking, she would come into the studio and do some work in metal. And we were talking, I said, you know, I really want to put some color in my work. And I don't want to do enameling. And she says, we were brainstorming. She says, what about pot de verre? And I said, I don't know anything about pot de verre. And so we started doing some research. And so this is, this is a lampshade that I made in pot de verre, but it's got a lot of little fractures and you can see it broke. Um, um, it's, it's, it's fine. I'm good with it. I mean, it's really a beautiful piece, but there are a lot of problems as in, I don't know if Marissa can zoom in here along here. Can you see all that, the openings underneath the leaf mm. and everything? Um, the glass didn't get packed really well because I, of course, this is the way I am, chose a very difficult design um, to start out with. But I'm really pleased. I think here is a good one too. You can see the crack right in there. Mm -hmm. So what happened is the glass didn't get packed well in many places. So it's not sturdy. It's not thick enough along the edge either. And because these areas are so thick, the glass pulled towards itself in the thickest areas and it actually created um, stress, stress fractures. You can't see them, but they're all down like through from the blossom up, from the bulb up. And so I'm pleased with the, the colors, you know, I was really pleased with that. Um, and when you, let me see if I can show you what they really look like because they don't look like much right now. But when you wet them, the colors come out and they're really beautiful. And so what I would do if this were a finished piece, there is a wax that you can use to, um, <coughs> to brighten them up. So I am really interested in the pot de verre process. And from this little lampshade, I mean, this is the base that I started working on for that lampshade. And of course, I, I work by flying by the seat of my pants. My designs are not necessarily thought out previously to starting them. I started out making my stem for my lamp and I started out in brass because I did a template to make sure it would all work. And then initially I was going to just have this little base and then put something around oh i know what it was because i've expanded on it um i was going to have all this put together and that would be my lamp base well i got to talking to a good friend in pennsylvania who makes lamps and or not makes he refurbishes antique lighting and we got to talking and he says you know that's not going to work uh, you need more support at the base and you are going to have to figure out this and this and this. And so I've got some ideas now and he has access to all the components that I need to make my, my vase. And the shade for this little piece is going to be smaller in diameter than this one that you've seen here, the yellow one. So I'm not going to, I don't think I can replace the glass inserts, Catherine, um, because pot de verre is a very porous, uh, pr uh, product. So mm -hmm. on my, my lampshade, I had it at a high fire. So it fused completely on the inside. It was glossy, glassy, glossy. If you don't fuse completely, um, it, it, it's very porous. The glass kind of tacks itself together. All the granules tack to one another. It's not a complete fuse. So um, they would be fine as decorative objects, but if people wanted to use them, I wanted to offer them the opportunity to have a, a blown glass insert for it. So that's mm -hmm. how I'm going to offer Genevieve, them from now on. Yes. Genevieve, you went to Corning to learn that, right? I did. I went in January, and it was a um, lottery drawing. You signed up, you threw your name in a hat, and they drew your name out to, to attend. Uh, luckily, there was plenty of, of people or there were only six people that actually made it to the class. I think they had nine and three people actually bowed out before the class even started. 
So that really was a benefit to me and my friend who went because there were only six in the class. And I took from uh, Alicia Lomne, and she's, she does contemporary pot de verre, and she's very good at it, and she's a really good teacher. But previously to that, we were doing our research about pot de verre, and I actually went on to Bullseye Glasses site and purchased access to a um, five-hour video that Alicia had actually um, filmed. And so we practiced a little bit before we got there. And it was really helpful because this was a more advanced class. Um, and so if we had not known what we were doing, we wouldn't have been as far as we were. Thanks, Genevieve. I have to You're go. My okay, husband, Linda, thanks. My husband says he's hungry. <laughs> um, okay, feed him. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Anybody else? I'll ask another question. Okay, where, please. Uh, where do you see your work going? What do you think you're going to take your direction into the future? Oh, Catherine, good question. Um, I'm not really clear on that right now. I have just really dug my heels in again. I've noticed a pattern in my life that every five to seven years I do some major changes and and then I, I go in, I go up and down hills a lot. And so I am my own worst enemy when it comes to keeping myself from working. Um, but I'm back on the horse and um, trying to figure out, I'm trying to get things set up so I can actually sell my work on Instagram through Facebook. Um, with the market changing because of the economy, I'm not real sure what's going to happen there. But um I want to see, well, and, and I'll, I'll toot my own horn. I have a piece, a teapot presently in the Netherlands in an international silver exhibition. And when I got into that, it was, it really opened my eyes that my work, I didn't see it, but everybody else saw it, that my work was um, international work. And so I'm in with the, the big, big boys and girls mm -hmm. all over Europe. And I see that I really feel like Europe is more of a market for my work than the United States. Uh, and I think I feel like that's because um, Europeans still do an apprenticeship in silver or as a silversmith and their attention to detail and finishing and craftsmanship is still impeccable in most regions um, and can, and in, uh, the United States there, I've never found anybody that would offer an apprenticeship. I'm not saying they're not out there, but it's different. It's very different. So if I can continue getting into international exhibitions and getting my work in front of people who have, um, I don't know, I even know what to say, appreciation, knowledge or whatever, that's, that's where I see my work being or hopefully being. Well, good luck. Thank you. What attracted me to Reposé as a question? That's a really good question. Uh, here's a, a, a little story. I had actually signed up at Revere Academy to take an enameling class with Linda Darty, And then this gentleman from Italy, Fabrizio Aquafresca, was teaching Reposé. So I signed up for both classes because I figured it's a crapshoot. I'll get into, get into one or the other or neither one. Well, I got called. I was on a wait list for both classes. They called me first for Linda Darty's class. And I said, so where am I at on the list for Fabrizio's class? And they said, you're next up. And I said, then let somebody have Linda's class and I'm going to do this. That's kind of how I work. And it was, it must have been a gut feeling that that's what I wanted to do. I had taught myself and my background, I have no college degree. I took no medals courses. Most of my experience is working as a bench jeweler, which had no bearing on these larger pieces of work. But most of my stuff is um, self-taught. And I jump in and I try it and I figure it out or I don't or whatever. So I had done very little chasing, hardly any repose. And so when I got into Fabrizio's class, it was a life-changing thing for me because he, 
He taught in a way that I could understand. I had taken a class with um, Valentin Yotkov, and he's an excellent teacher. He teaches totally different, and I learned a lot from him. But for some reason, I think the universe opened up my eyeballs and, and my heart, and Fabrizio was the one that really um, helped me move forward in my career on the repose. Who's talking to me? The kitty. Anybody else? Do you have a, a tip you would pass on? Something you've learned along the way that you pass on to save us from having to learn that lesson? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a hard one because each of my students say when I'm teaching them, they say, why don't you write a book? And I said, oh, everybody, you know, knows this or, or and, and that's not true. You know, through all the years of, of my work and learning things, it's the only tip I would say is don't stop. You know, just because you've made a mistake, it's like that, the bird vessel, you know, that I worked on for three years off and on. Um, I, I persevered. I, I really am not pleased with it totally i would have loved for it to turn out differently but it didn't and i learned a lot out of it so i guess my thing is is always don't be a quitter um it's just you know you you can do anything you want to put your mind to and and you're the one that stops yourself and i've stopped myself a lot but i always come back around so you know tips I don't, I can't come up with anything off the top of my head. That's terrible. But, you know, that's just my philosophy. So. Jenny, and I'm an open, I'm an open book. If anybody ever wants to ask me a question or needs assistance, contact me, text me, email me, anything. Genevieve, uh, who are your influences? Who, who do you look up to or what, uh, what periods of our, of, the past or, or the present? Um, I adore Klee's work. I adore Kandinsky's work. I have two sides to my work sometimes because I get really drawn to a geometric side of my work, which I don't show a lot of it, but it's just fascinating to me to go that direction. I, I adore nature and clearly the flora fauna, but, um, and present day people, Oh, I adore Tom Herman. His work is so impeccable and so incredible. And there are a couple of um, English silversmiths that I have found on Instagram. And one of them is Ray. I don't know if he pronounces his name. Oh, Ray Walton. Ray Walton. He's a great silversmith. Uh, Robert Butler is here in the in um, the United States, and he's a classically trained English silversmith. And we've become friends and he's just an open book. He'll answer any of my questions. I call him up and we chat. He resides now in Florida. Um, who else do I adore their work? Um, I love, uh, is it Paul Wolfer? He was in the um, arts, not arts and crafts, Art Nouveau movement. Um, Emily Bonte, she carved horn jewelry pieces in the Art Nouveau period. Um, I could probably name off a bazillion, but right off the top of my head, those are people that I really admire. Um, Marissa told me there's someone that asked a question what I considered teaching a repose class. Susan Kendig and I had actually talked about maybe uh, me coming to St. Louis to teach a class in repose, and I'd be happy to teach anything you guys want. Anything, I let's put it that way, not anything more. The one that I was one that I see in your work is Emile Gallet. Do you have you seen? His? Oh, yes, Gallet okay. is is beautiful. Definitely, yeah. The the carving of the glass, even Rene Lalique. Um, right. I mean, we can go on and on. Yeah, yeah there, but those, there's, two, those two are I see in your work. Definitely, yes. How are we doing on time? It's 616 right now. Okay. So, uh, 
Come on, people. You've got questions. <laughs> Don't, you know what? There is no stupid question, peeps. No. Uh, they are not dumb. And I, I, I am a, I stopped any art classes. That's why I'm self-taught. In junior high, I had an art teacher that kind of, she really hurt my feelings. So I never took another art class throughout my, my life. And at 24, I took a drawing class. Uh, very basic drawing class. And again, I didn't, I didn't feel I, I excelled in it. And so through all these years, I've, I've tried to teach myself how to draw three dimensionally. I can sit down and draw a stick drawing and I can sit down then at the bench and create the piece because I can see it in my head. I know right. how to do it. So, um, you know, I teach that there aren't any stupid questions. You hold yourself back by not asking those questions and ask until you understand what I'm trying to teach you because everybody processes differently. Mm -hmm. And I will try my darndest to get that information to you, whether it's visually or verbally or whatever. We'll do what we have to do to help you to understand. So, you know, I, I try to open that door with people because I get many students that are ADD, or they're um, dyslexic. Many artists are dyslexic. And so I ask those personal questions because if I don't know how you process, then I can't teach you. So, you know, I, I don't find it um, embarrassing. I, it sh nobody should be embarrassed about any of that at all. Great job, Genevieve. Genevieve. Thank um, you. I need to um, go now, but it was really good, really, really good. Thank you so much. Thanks for attending. Genevieve, my name's Jessica yes, Erickson. I just want to- Genevieve, I have a question. Oh, wait a minute. Let Jessica talk, please. <laughs> it's okay. okay we're That's okay. Um, it's really great opening up your studio to letting us see what you're, you're doing and everything. And I, I just really yeah. appreciate the, the, the time. So thank you so much. Oh. You are so welcome. I, I look forward to seeing other members doing the same thing because I, it's just, especially during this time of the pandemic, we're not able to get together as a community and talk about things or kvetch about things. And I just think it's really fun to see where everybody works. I know not necessarily our members, but I, people work on their, their kitchen table. And, you know, so I, I, it's interesting how we work and how we make it work for ourselves. So thank you so much. There was somebody else that wanted to ask a question. I do have a question. Yeah. Yes. I had a question. My name is my my name is Penny, and I'm here with Sherry. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my question about the piece. I have, actually have two questions about it. One of which is the insert. You've got clear glass. I you've considered other inserts for it any co other colors and maybe frosted or that kind of thing and the other you know for the is, insert what oh i'm you, sorry go ahead the other question is what makes you feel it's a failure that you haven't it hasn't gotten there yet okay um first question was about the glass insert um i chose clear on this one because i really wanted to focus in on my work my personal work um, I was afraid if I chose a color, because I went back and forth about colors with Tyler Kimball of Monarch Glass. I was really afraid that if I did color, it was going to pull your eye towards the insert as opposed to my, my work. My vanity, I want you to see my work. I don't want you to choose the glass insert. Um, so we did, we, we did clear. And on this insert, Tyler did a really beautiful slanted edge on it, which that was a surprise to me. I just kind of turned him loose and said, do whatever. I want it clear, you know. And so he did the, the slanted uh, surface on it. Um, the, the failure on it, Penny, was, if you can zoom back in here, Marissa, the failure is this little bird, to me, looks like a parakeet. The birds were supposed to be American kestrels they don't even come close to resembling an American kestrel. And I can't even call it, you know, raptors because they don't feel like they even look like raptors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, 
that's my failure. That, that one is. And so um, I think they turned out beautifully for what it is, but I would really like to have been able to master their faces more. And that's because I don't do animals so much. And so that I bought books on um, sculpting, on wood carving animals. You know, there are a lot of uh, wood carvers out there that do nature uh, themed pieces like mallard ducks or birds and all of that. And um, they do a beautiful job. And it's really interesting to see how they work, what kind of model they put together. And I actually sat down with some plasticine clay and sculpted the face because if I can if I can sculpt it, then I know what to do in the metal. I just can't see it from a drawing or even a picture. I actually need that three dimensionality in my face to help me understand where the eyes went because my eyes were always in the front of his head. Birds don't have eyes in the front of their head; they're on the sides of their heads. That was, I think, on the one that I ended up putting <laughs> a beak on. Um, those eyes changed about five times and you know so it's just i didn't have anybody to talk to about it i mean i had a couple of people that came in and they, and they would see different things and, and so i tried to make adjustments but you know it's it that's the detriment of working by yourself that's the detriment in my mind of not having a, an art background where you know you have that drawing experience and you know that you know this goes here and this goes here it doesn't go here so I, that's all and you know i beat myself up enough about it i'm done with it i'm moving on <laughs> yeah i have to agree it doesn't look like raptors because not they don't at look all menacing or like they're going to you know <laughs> so they look sweet I, I get it but it's beautiful yeah. so thank you well so i'm yeah. gonna call them buddies that's all i'm gonna i don't know what to call them at this point <laughs> just call them birds <laughs> birds exactly they're just birds two birds <laughs> oh, birds. <laughs> and genevieve the cook never apologizes just to exhibit it it's two birds they're beautiful well, thank you so much. And, you know, at this point, I'm not going to apologize. I'm just explaining to you guys what I've gone through. And it's like, oh, it's been, it's been difficult. So. Well, just well, start another one. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I will. <laughs> See, I really enjoyed doing the copper piece because I could make it very whimsical and I still got nice detail. I, I got a boo-boo here. I'd never tell anybody else about it, but you know, the breast doesn't, the we, the feathers and the breast are not right. But you know, all these are just, they're experiments and I get better each time. And uh, so live and learn. That's great. Mm, they're amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoy making them. I hope it comes out in my work. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Don't definitely. worry about okay. that. You never notice the mistakes you think you made. <laughs> <laughs> well, Genevieve, I think this yes, is Sherry. Hi, Sherry. This is Sherry Jardine. Yeah. When did you, hi. When did you start teaching? 20 years ago. And it was not my calling. I was asked by a bead shop here in Kansas City, their instructor had either been fired or he left or whatever, whatever it was. And they asked if I would fill in. I said, yeah, I'll only just fill in. I don't want to teach. That's not what I want to do. And that's history. I've been teaching ever since. So <laughs> I'm a, I, I find that I'm a good teacher. And, um, but it's never been the thing that I have the most passion for. And so I get burnt out kind of easily because most of my students are beginners. Um, and so that's why, you know, when I started bringing instructors into my studio to teach classes, it was purely selfishness because I brought the people in that I was interested in. And yes, of course, I brought some people in that other people would be interested in, but it was like, I get to participate or at least, at least be involved in the class, meet the instructor. It w it was, um, yeah, uh, pretty selfish. And I'm, I'm proud to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the next uh, one of these tours we're going to do is going to be Kelly. Yay! Yay! I'm excited. And so we're looking forward to that. And um, of course, we need more volunteers. Most uh, definitely. And uh, so it's sort of what we're going to do as the workshop committee. We're, we're at least we're doing something, you know. Yes. <laughs> With I agree. And it, we all learn a little bit. And uh, so if you're willing to show us off, off your studio, please just email one of us and uh, let us know. I think we should do nomination based because Genevieve kind of helped nominate me. <laughs> so can I get one? <laughs> now we're all intimidated. <laughs> And thank you, Genevieve. That was wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you all for having me. I really appreciate it. This was fun, and I look forward to the next group or the next person. Are we saying bye? Um, I don't know. Lisa bye. just came in. Oh, hey, Lisa. I don't know. I. She says she's connecting, or it says on the screen. I'm gonna put my. She's connecting. Is she there? I don't know, Lisa. Her can you name hear us? Here. I see I haven't seen her. Oh well, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know what to do. She needs to turn <laughs> on her video. Oh, and there's Lainey. Lainey. She's muted. You're muted. Just turn yourself on. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Hi. Okay. How's that? Hey. Perfect. Catherine, Catherine Bowman. Yes. Um, if you would like, you can take me off as host, or I can go off as host. It's it's up to you. I don't know what we're doing okay. at the moment. It, it doesn't matter. I I don't really remember how I made you host. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll just leave it as it is then. <laughs> As we're you learning. can tell, we're learning as we're, we go. Yeah. That's right. And so I think that's good that everybody sees that, you know, we still don't know what we're doing sometimes. Yeah. Co what is it? COVID grace. COVID grace is what my daughter <laughs> said. <laughs> oh, I like that. Indeed. Who's Pat? Um, See, I don't no. know who Neither Pat is. is. That's Kathy Bradford. You're on mute, Kathy. I've never uh, got onto Zoom before. This is my first time, so. Uh, oh yay! yay! <laughs> Glad you're here. I, and I was late too. My grandson had to graduation tonight, so Aww. I missed most of it. But looking forward to the next one. Yes. Good. Thank I you. Uh -huh. I don't know, if, most of you don't know Kathy. I, maybe you've been to a few meetings, but Kathy's taken classes from me. Uh -huh. so, um, but she's done a lot of, and it was all medals classes too, wasn't it, Kathy? Yes, it was. Yeah. Enjoyed, enjoyed your classes at your home there. Yeah, cool. Catherine, I think there's someone else has a question. Marissa just told me. Um, oh boy. How do you promote yourself? Well, you know, this is a learning curve right now. And I'm learning that um, I used to do the American craft shows. So the promotion there was great. Um, when I, I have all of my classes posted up on my website so that when it comes up on the search engines, I'm the first one in Kansas city to pop up on your screen. Um, as for my work, that has always been a challenge for me, how to promote. I'm Right now, I'm represented by a gallery here in Kansas City, but he has an international presence. He's got about three websites that my work is presently on. Um, I, how, I just I, realized, I, of Genevieve, the other day yes. that he has you on Artsy. Yes, ma'am. Artsy. Uh, have you sold on Artsy? I have not. Not yet. And basically what he's um, representing are my vessels. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, he's he's got a great following. It's just a matter of people don't know who I am. And so it's just trying to get my work out there. So I'm starting to work on uh, getting a shop set up for Etsy. And I have an Etsy shop. I don't sell on Etsy, but I have, I mean, I have a shop on Etsy. It's not selling at the moment. I have, I want to do an Instagram uh, shop or Facebook catalog, you gotta have, they both go hand in hand and I'm learning that right now. I'm also updating my website uh, and my e-commerce site on there. I've had pieces up there, but I haven't updated it. So now they're up to snuff. Um, And I'm not real sure how I'm gonna promote myself other than I got into the Brookside Art Fair this year and due to the virus, it was uh, postponed till September. I don't think it's going to happen this year. I think I'll roll over and I'll be in the show in May of next spring, 2021. If it happens, I just don't know how this is all going to turn out. So, I mean, that was my doing a craft show, a local craft show was my way of trying to get my name back out there again, because I've been out of the market so long. People know that I teach classes, but they don't know my work basically. So an ongoing job it is an ongoing job it has been since my career started so and it's always changing word of mouth has been a great one for me on my custom work Uh, so you know I continue to get custom uh, or commissions and uh, you know someday I'm going to get a commission for one of my vessels too (laughs) birds lots of Birds. Birds. Okay, more birds. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear before because I'm late, but I wonder if you could tell me, do you ever let anybody into your studio? I do. I usually, um, before the virus, I have eight spaces here that I can teach up to eight students. But uh, usually I, I'll get two to three people in at a time to teach. I also do one-on-one classes. Um, I get a lot of people that contact me, you know, searching for silversmithing classes or jewelry classes in Kansas City, and my name comes up immediately. Um, Right now, I just have reopened the studio to one student at a time. We're wearing masks. We're sanitizing all the time. Uh, It's difficult not to be close to a student when you're doing a one-on-one class. And so, you know, I, I check with them to see how comfortable they are about the whole situation. So far, everybody's been okay. I have, you know, I, my husband's retired and I work from my home. We've been been doing self quarantining. So we're relatively safe. I don't ever want to tell anybody I'm 100% safe, but I think we're, we're pretty safe. I actually bought a um, air cleaner, air purifier that has a pretty big HEPA filter in it that filters out 99% of particles. And it does filter out some viruses um and so i figured that can't hurt you know i keep it as clean as possible and i sanitize all the time and so um yes long long answer i do take people into my studio great thank you you're welcome any more questions Well, I guess we'll wrap up then, everybody. Thank you so much for showing up. It was a good showing tonight. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Catherine, for everything. Thank you, Genevieve. And Genevieve, you were fabulous. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. And we'll just get back together sometime so we can film the first portion of the gallery tour or studio tour. I, I'm just too social. I forgot my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We forgive you. That's what we like about you. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies. Thank, thank, you thank you again. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Good to see you all.